Welcome back to the Life is Cool Lab. The last time we were here and we were together, we talked about the liver and what happens when the blood gets to the liver. Now we're gonna talk about what happens when the blood goes from the liver to the kidneys. And in order to do that, we have a very special guest today. She's my good friend, Adrienne. And Adrienne works for an organization that is affiliated with Donate Life. Adrienne, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Donate Life is and what you do? Hi everyone, <laughs> my name is Adrienne, like Miss Vita said, and I work in education for an organ, eye, and tissue organization affiliated with the Donate Life community. And I absolutely love working with kiddos to teach them how they can keep their bodies healthy and how they can help their community and even a stranger. So, Adrian, I bet you know a lot about the kidneys since you talk about them all the time. Well, I do know a little bit about the kidneys. <laughs> Did everybody know that they have two kidneys? But here's the secret. You only need one to live. And so, super cool, right? <laughs> so we're gonna kinda see what do our kidneys do? If we only need one, how does it operate? What does it do for our body? So like Miss Vita talked about during the liver portion of our adventure, how the liver breaks down all of the bad stuff in our blood, in our bodies, the kidneys filter that bad stuff out. And so it helps our bodies get rid of all the things that we don't need. So we're going to pretend that this strainer is like our kidneys. Okay. So we're going to put just a few more things. So let's say, Miss Vita, what are some of your favorite healthy things to eat? Um, I really love, love um, apples. Oh. And I love mangoes. Oh, those are really tasty. But my favorite is pineapples. Oh, I do, do love pineapples too. <laughs> so let's say that you ate some pineapples mm -hmm. and mangoes and apples for a snack, and then you're gonna have some water. So I don't know about you, but when I drink a lot of water, I sometimes have to ask <laughs> my teacher to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> let's see what that looks like when you drink a little bit of water after you eat some fruit. Oh, so like most of it goes through. Yeah, so this is our blood and it is cleaning out all of the bad stuff. So all this water is what we call urine. And that is when your body is breaking down and filtering out all the bad stuff in our blood that we don't need anymore. But what happens when we don't eat all the good things like pineapples and apples and let's say we have I don't know maybe some pizza for lunch and a bag of chips um, and what about maybe a soda hmm then we'd have like a lot more sugar right and a yeah. lot more bad things absolutely so let's use this cap full here to okay. represent what that looks like when we have all of the bad stuff sugars and salts and unnecessary stuff our body doesn't need we're gonna just add a little bit more Okay, so can you pour more water to demonstrate what that blood looks like sure. then? Okay, so... Oh, wow. So, yeah. like, not as much of it gets through. Not as much, no. You can definitely see some hanging out up on top. So, let's show everybody what happens when you drink a lot of water. So, you've had a lot of salty foods, you've had a lot of sweet snacks but your body is trying to get rid of all of those bad things it doesn't need, mm -hmm. and we drink a lot of water. What happens then? Okay. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I think I got splashed! <laughs> so that's why you should drink a lot of water, because your body and your blood need to get rid of all the bad stuff that it doesn't need. And if you notice, the more water you drink, the more you have to might ask your teacher if you can use the restroom. <laughs> well, Adrian, so what happens if I only eat lots of candy and candy bars and chips and stuff, but I don't drink enough water. What happens? Well, we're going to meet a special guest later on our adventure that's going to talk about his personal experience. But when you don't drink a lot of water after you've not made very many good choices, you've chosen a lot of treats instead of maybe some important meals of your day, then that means that your body is not going to have very much energy and you're not going to be able to filter out all that bad stuff. You might even get a headache because your body is something we call dehydrated. So you need a lot of water so that you can feel hydrated. Well, thank you, Adrian. I'm so glad you got to stop by today. Thanks for having me. I hope this isn't the end of the kidney conversation because you know I do love talking about the kidneys. <laughs> well, luckily, it is not the end. And when we come back, guys, we're going to go on a field trip to visit with a couple friends who are going to talk about their personal experience and tell us what happens when your kidneys stop working properly. Okay, guys, we're here at the Phil Klein Family YMCA in Huntington, West Virginia, and we're going to pop inside and visit with some of my really good friends. Come on. Hey guys! Hey, how you doing, Miss I'm good! I just wanted to stop by and visit you guys 
today. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're just playing a little game of kidney, that's all. What is kidney? It's so. like horse, but we're using the word kidney. Okay, and who's winning? Me, of course. Of course. <laughs> so guys, this is my good friend Sean, and this is my good friend Kara. And guys, we're here today because we were in the Life is Cool lab learning about kidneys. And I heard that you know some interesting things about kidneys. Like you had an interesting experience involving your kidneys. Is that right? I did. So my kidneys stopped working. There's various reasons that kidneys can stop working. Um, injuries, high blood pressure, or uncontrolled diabetes. And mine stopped working. So that was pretty rough. I mean, it meant going on dialysis. And for a young person, that's a lot to take in. Yeah. Um, so what dialysis does is it cleans your blood because that's what your kidneys do. Your kidneys regulate your blood pressure and it cleans your blood. So when your kidneys don't work, you have to have a machine that does that for you. It takes all the blood out and it puts the blood back in your body once it's clean. But I did a cool type of di uh, dialysis called peritoneal dialysis where oh, okay. it puts a fluid in my stomach and cleans my blood that way. And it does it while I'm asleep. So I don't feel anything, there's no pain, and I wake up and my blood's clean. Wow, that is so neat. So how old were you when all that started? I was 26 when all that started. So pretty, wow. pretty emotional, yeah. big life changes with that. Yeah, so what kind of things had to change when you started realizing that your kidneys were failing and that you were having trouble? Like what sort of lifestyle changes did you have to make? My diet and time, because going to dialysis or having to do dialysis, you have to change what you sleep, when you wake up, and the diet is the main thing. You can't eat a lot of um, carbs and water. You're on a lot of water restrictions water. because right. with your kidneys, you typically pee out all the toxins that your kidneys use to clean your blood. Mm -hmm. And with the water, when you're not peeing, you have to get it out somehow. So you have to kind of control your water intake. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff you have to do every single day. Wow, so like what ended up happening? Are you still doing all of this now or? I am not. So 85% of people waiting for an organ donation are waiting for kidneys. Wow. And luckily, my brother matched my blood. His blood matches mine, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> he was able to give me a kidney. Wow, that's really awesome because I don't know if you guys know this, but the reason that 85% of the people are waiting for kidneys is because not everybody has a family member that matches them. So you, you can have a brother and your brother still not match you. And sometimes the only option is to wait for a stranger to be your hero. Can you imagine that? That's wild. But kidneys, you could donate your kidney while you're still alive. That means 85% of the people on the wait list could be saved by a living donor. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. So like, Sean, she's obviously talking about you. Absolutely. You're her brother, right? Yes. Are you the big brother or the little brother? Big brother. Big brother. So big brother stepped in and saved the, saved the day. Big brother, best basketball player, whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay. See, I heard different. I heard that Kara was the best basketball player. Well, people but we'll, lie. We'll have to we'll have to check that out in a minute. But like Sean, so what went through your mind when you like were deciding if you wanted to give your kidney or not? I mean, that's a really big deal. You have to be really brave. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was huge. Uh, you know, I thought about it. I always wanted to give it to her. Uh, but you know, I'm a dad, a 13 year old boy. And my biggest thing was also to make sure that I'd be okay for him. Uh, yeah. And we had a really, really good team at UK. Uh, and once they assured me that everything would be all right, uh, again, it was a long process going to Lexington, uh, getting the checkup, seeing if you match and doing all those things. But uh, after a while, I just knew it was the right decision, so. That's awesome, that's awesome. Everybody should have an awesome big brother, right? Awesome. <laughs> so how has your life changed since you got your transplant? I'm sure like things are so different now. So how I told you I was on peritoneal dialysis. The uh -huh. cool thing about that was that I could take my machine wherever I go. So I was still able to travel. Well now, I can hit the road and I don't have to take that machine and call it an early night many nights like I used to. Yeah. I can go back to drinking as much water as I want and my diet is more open now. That's awesome. Wow. That's, That's awesome. a really big deal. So when we came in, you guys were playing kidney. A little bit. Who was winning? I can't remember. Winning. Of course you were. Um, because she is the best ball player I've heard. Yeah. Whatever. That's what they say. That's what they say. But us girls, we have to stick together, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what point, what, what letter are you on? I think I had a D. He had a kid. Oh, he had a kid? Had a kid. A 13-year-old kid and a kid? Okay. I think she had Kai. Well, 
Um, that would not be winning. Would, oh, well, that would be winning, wouldn't it? I'm winning. Because you get a letter every time you miss, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I brought my coach whistle today. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to be your referee while you finish your game. Sounds good. Are you ready? Absolutely. Ready. It's over! I just want to thank you guys so much for letting me pop in and interrupt you today because this was awesome. The kids, I'm sure, have loved learning all about your experience and getting your kidney. And Sean, I'm sure they were like, what? Giving somebody their kidney, that's a really big deal. So thank you guys so much. No problem. Um, and guys, I'm going to see you back in the Life is Cool lab.